Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking car animation using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have is I'm using this image as my guide and I'm basically going to recreate it. So I went to Adobe Color and I got the color scheme from that image and now I'm just starting to recreate it. The first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the pen tool to create the edge for the water. I then I'm going to change the stroke on the water and I'm going to match it with the colors that I already have. You need to make sure that the blue goes to the entire side of the screen otherwise you're going to have bits and pieces that stick out. So the next thing that we need to do is I'm just separating everything into layers and I'm just going to create the background. Now the background is just a simple rectangle set to that original color. And now with the water and the background together, you can see the effect that we are going for. I'm just curving a little bit of some of the curves on the water to make it a little bit softer. So the next thing that we have to add is the road. And so for the road, I'm going for a gray color and I'm going to be using the pen tool. Now with the pen tool, I'm just setting up points and then I'm going to actually start to use the curves to try and get some smoothness to the road. So all I'm doing now is I'm just clicking on the points and then just making sure that they are curved. Now you can obviously do this with the pen tool as well. If you click and hold, you will create a curve in the line and you just need a little bit of practice in getting that working well. So once the road is set up, I've set the stroke to probably about 140, but you can change it to whatever fits on your screen. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to create a new layer and we have to copy the road and we have to paste it in place. And now we are going to bring the stroke down to about eight. And so I'm going for a light gray color and that's going to be our dashed line. Now to get into the dashed line, you just have to click on the word stroke and that will bring up the stroke options. And so now we're going to duplicate the road and we're just going to set it behind the main dark road layer and we're just going to increase the stroke size on that just so you can see a little bit of an edge uh, around it. And once we've done that, then we are going to go back to our original colors from the original document and we're just going to add another stroke around the road. So once you have the gray outline on the road, we then need to repeat the process again and we are going to be using the same color that we used for the outside of the water. So it's the same process, we just need to copy it and then paste it in place and then we are calling it road outline V2. So now the next thing is we are going to start to add some greenery to our scene. So I'm drawing up a tree here. So I'm just I'm picking a brown for the base of the tree and then I'm using the green that was already in our color scheme. And so now I'm just adding uh, small little circles on the tree and I've just increased the color just a little bit higher so it's not as dark as a green as the rest of the, the top of the tree. And so once you've got that tree, you can group it and then you can start to duplicate it by holding Alt and dragging it around your screen. So once we've got the tree, then we're just going to go and grab the gravel. Now the gravel just comes from the original stock image that we have. Just make sure that you download the Illustrator file just so that you can grab it and it will just save you a little bit of time. If not, you can just uh, draw ellipses on your own and fill it in with that color. And so I'm doing the same thing with the signs here. I'm just grabbing it from the original art just to save a little bit of time. I'm adding some waves as well and they're just squiggly lines and I'm just uh, making them a little bit, you know, random so some are a little bit bigger than others. The final th thing that I'm going to add to this scene is I'm just going to add the building. Now you can draw the building yourself but I'm just going to use it from the other piece of art. So now I'm putting the building in there and now it comes to the most important part. We need to actually create the path for the cars. So I've just went and created a first line from the dashed line and I've duplicated that and I've pasted it in place. And now what I'm doing is I'm just setting the path for the cars to actually follow. So you need to make sure that it goes on the right side of the road 
on both sides of all the curves. And so what you need to do is you need to grab the direct selection tool and just move it around until it fits in nice. So now we'll repeat that process again. So I'm just going to make a new layer and call this one path V2. And I'm going to do the same thing again, but you need to make sure that when you click on the direct selection tool, you have to actually click on an anchor point to be able to move the path around. If you don't, the entire path will move. So if you need to click and grab any of the handles, you can and you can adjust it so it fits on the other side. You can always zoom in by holding Alt on your keyboard and scrolling on your mouse wheel. Now, once you've done that correctly, we then can move to the next step, which is to add the cars in. So now I'm ready to add the cars in and all I'm doing is I'm just, I've downloaded a Illustrator file with all these cars and I'm making a new layer for each of the cars. So all I have to do is just scale it down to fit inside my little road map and then I'm just placing it in the right direction so that I know that I want the car to go in that way. Now, there are many different um, vector graphics places that you can go and download these images from, but I was using freepick.com and they have a wide range of Adobe Illustrator files that you can use in your graphics. So I did this for about four cars, but you can add different elements, like you can add a truck, you can add a motorbike, you can add whatever you like. So it's really up to you what you actually choose to put onto your map. So then once we have all the cars on the actual Adobe Illustrator file, we are then going to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file, and then we are going to import it into After Effects. So now that we have After Effects open, all we need to do is import our assets. And all we have to do is right click and then go to import file. Once you've imported your file, you wanna import it as a composition and then you can just press okay. So now that I've got my flat road asset in here, all I need to do is just double click on it and then I need to find out where my cars are. So I can see here that this orange car or red car as I called it, is going on this path, whereas all the others are going on the other path. So I'm just going to kind of separate them. So I'm just going to put all the ones that are on the same path closer together. I then need to go to the path and we're gonna see which one we are going to work on first. So I'm gonna work on the red path here. So what we need to do is we need to right click on the path and then go to create, create shapes from vector layer. And now once we've done that, we can go and bring this up and I'm just going to put it just above all of the cars that appear on that path. Now with the path outlines here, what I need to do is I just need to go and get the path. And so there's a lot of clicking in here, but once you get into the group one path one path, you can press control C on your keyboard to copy. And then what you can do is you can come over here to all of your cars that are on that path all right, highlight them all, press P, all right, set a keyframe for the position and then press Control V to paste. Now, as soon as you do that, everything is going to look a little bit messy on your screen. So what you need to do is we are going to create a null object by right clicking and going a new null object. And then we are going to parent the yellow car, the gray car and the brown car to that null object. Now, once you've done that, then all you have to do is kind of line up the path with the null object. So now I can grab the null and I can move it around. So I'm just gonna move it probably right over there and then I'm going to see if the path matches. And so that still doesn't match. So I'm just going to go back and keep moving it around until I find the correct path. So now it's uh, it just needs a little bit of um, fixing up over there.
Okay, cool. So now I can nudge that with my uh, arrow keys if I really need to. And now when I go and play that back, you can see that the car follows that path and it's looking pretty funny because the car doesn't turn. So to fix that, what you need to do is you need to go to all your cars and then you need to go into right click and then you can go to transform, auto, orient along the path. And once you've done that, it tries to fix it up, but it doesn't really do such a good job. So what you're going to have to do, you might have to come and do this manually for each car. But I'm just going to press R on my keyboard for rotation and I'm just going to move it slightly so it looks a little bit better. And so when you do that, you can see that it's now following the path and you can do that for all the other cars. So now what we are going to do is I'm just going to press U on my keyboard for all the keyframes. I'm just going to drag out this last keyframe probably to about 8 seconds and you can see what actually happens on the screen. So now the, the yellow car is going much slower than the other cars. So you can play around with some of these settings. So I'm going to make um, one go a little bit faster and another go a little bit slower. And if you need to change the orientation on any of those cars, all you have to do is just right click. All you have to do is just press R on your keyboard and then you can change the rotation to however you like. And so even on the gray car, I'm just going to move it slightly. And so now when we have a look at that, you can see that the cars are now moving nicely but they're all like coming after each other so what we can do is we can just move these you know maybe like a second down and we'll move the brown car another second down like that so they don't start all at the same time so there goes the yellow car and then the gray car is following and it finally catches up so we don't want it to hit So now when we preview that back, the yellow car comes out and then the grey car is coming pretty fast but it just won't catch it and then the brown car comes after that. So it's looking pretty cool. So now we, all we need to do is we need to repeat that process for the other path and now we can actually take off that path, we don't actually need it. So I'm going to go here and find the other path and then I'm going to do the same process again. Right click and then go into create and then create shapes from vector layer. And now I'm just going to move that all the way to the top because there is only one car there. And I'm going to repeat that same process again. So open up all the contents to group the path and then press Control C. Go to the red car, make sure you're at the start of the playhead. Press P for position, set a keyframe and then paste it. And so now it's going to be all funny again. So all we need to do is we need to create a new null object and we're going to parent that red car to the null object and then we're just going to make it fit again. So I'm going to use the original null object as a guide and you can see that it's pretty close. So all I need to do is just nudge it slightly using left and right on my arrow keys. And so now it's done a pretty good job and so all we need to do is if we scrub through that you can see that the car is going the same way. So what we need to do is we need to come over here, we need to right click and then go to uh, time reverse keyframes. And so now the car will go from the opposite side. And so we also need to auto orient that car so we can right click, go to transform, auto orient and then press OK. And now it's kind of changed the car the other way around. So what we need to do is go to rotation and then rotate the car around and then finally the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase that time to the length of the clip which is 10 seconds and so now when I play that back you can see that the car is following the path nicely goes around and then comes back to the other side so now I can get rid of the outlines and that's basically it for the animation it is a very simple animation that is just following a path and there's nothing dif difficult about it. The last thing that I want to do is I want to come and I just want to add some movement to these waves. So I just want to go to the waves over here and then if I go into my effects and presets, there is a nice animation uh, preset which is called Shear. And if I double click it, 
you can see what actually happens you can see that the waves are moving and you can do any kind of other animations to any of the trees or the buildings or anything else like that now the final thing is you know you can see here that the car is going over the tree so we want to make sure that the tree is on a higher layer just so that the cars will pass it there and we also want to make sure that the signs are also at a high layer so we're just going to put them both at the top just like that and so now when the cars pass through you can see that they go underneath the actual signs and the tree but anyways that's about it thanks for watching and i will see you guys next time